Over the past few weeks, I've seen a lot of people attempt land speed records in Kerbal Space Program 2. That got me thinking, and I wanted to try setting a circumnavigation record myself. Now there are some rules to the challenge that I'm going to set to make it a little more reasonable. To start, I must stay in the atmosphere the entire time, and therefore I'll be fighting its drag. Secondly, I must land back at the Kerbal Space Center so I can't just rocket past it, which seems a little cheesy. Now of course, starting out with the vehicle assembly building here, the first thing I wanted to try making was a plane. Now, you see put down a cockpit, and on the back of that, I started to put down some fuel tanks. Now, these are pure methane tanks, and my plan originally was to try to use a jet engine. Now, these engines are a lot more efficient than just normal engines, so I should be able to burn them for a lot longer, and ideally get all the way around the globe. Now, you can see here, I put down some stabilizers in the back, and after that, I put down some more tanks to the side, so I can put down some air intakes. Now, on the back of those tanks, you can see I also put down a couple of engines, and after that, I threw on some landing gear. And with all this, I want to try giving it a test on the runway. Now starting out, it was a little unbalanced, but at the very least, firing up the engines here, everything seemed to work, and I slowly started to move forward. Now I realized very quickly, these engines are rather weak when you're not moving fast, and especially trying to take off here was a bit of a disaster. Now I came back, I tried extending out some of these stabilizers to give it a bit more health, and with this, I was able to get off the ground, and you can see here, I actually got up reasonably high. One thing though, is that my weight distribution was a little messed up, because as I kept burning fuel, you'll notice that I'm starting to dip further further into the ground until eventually here it was entirely unrecoverable. Now I sort of liked where that was going, but instead of using that normal jet engine, what I wanted to try doing here was using a standard methalox tank and using a more powerful engine. Now after throwing back on those wings, you can see I put down a couple of these vector engines at the back, and while these are going to burn a lot harder, they're also going to burn through a lot more fuel, and on the ground here, giving it a test, it did seem to be a lot better, but it was also burning through fuel super fast. Now I also had quite a bit of instability in this place plane, and you can see after quite a few flips here, eventually the whole thing just disintegrated. Now I figured that I could fix the weight distribution by putting out an engine that was a lot lighter. This also meant that my fuel was going to go for a lot longer, and after putting out a couple of these dart engines in the back here, I want to give it a test off the runway. Now I fired both these up, and you can see now trying to take off, it's genuinely not too bad. For some reason, it wanted to veer to the side, but I was able to get off the ground here, and especially in the air now, I was starting to get up to a thousand meters per second. That really wasn't too bad, but unfortunately, I did run out of fuel. Now I figured that a little bit of a boost off the runway probably wouldn't be a bad way to go, and after putting down a couple of radial decouplers, I stuck down a couple of these Clydesdale boosters. Now I put down a couple of nose cones, and given this a test, the game didn't really seem to like it. Now I could see here that one of the wings ended up snapping off, so I put down some landing gear on the boosters to help this out, and given this another test now, it was a little bit better. Unfortunately though, firing back up the boosters here, while it was getting up to a pretty good speed, I was having a lot of trouble getting off the ground, and at the end of the runway here, it kind of just vanished into oblivion. Now, for some more lift, I added on a couple of big wings on the end of those boosters, and I gave this another try. For whatever reason, they were upside down, but they also seemed to fall off very easily. Even trying this again here wasn't really much better, so instead, you can see what I did is got rid of those big boosters, and I put down some smaller ones. These looked a lot cooler, but they were also a lot weaker, and they weren't really giving me the desired effect. They also were messing up my weight distribution a lot, and it was a lot harder to take off the ground. It was around now though that I realized there's really no reason for me to take off from the runway, and taking off from the launch pad is probably a better way to go. Now by doing this, I'm also able to put boosters in the bottom of the plane, and you can see here I've sandwiched it between these Clydesdale boosters. This is a lot more stable than before, and with this, I'm able to quickly flip around and start to go up into the air. This is a lot better than I had before, and before these things run out, I'm almost up to 2,000 meters per second. Now I still was having some minor stability problems, and I was falling down, and I was having a lot of trouble pulling back up. Eventually with this plane, I did sort of manage to get it to work, and firing off these engines here started to gain more height. Now checking this out on the map view here, I actually got a considerable distance away from the Kerbal Space Center, and I still had quite a bit of fuel left. Now continuing to burn here, I once again got my speed up to about 1,500 meters per second, but that's when I ran out of fuel, and checking the map view again, I didn't really get that much farther. After this flight though, I got a pretty interesting idea, and in order to pull it off, I'm gonna need to build a smaller central plane. Now you can see here, I'm using a single 
single dart engine and just a single fuel tank as well. After putting down some wings here, you can see I also put down some of these Clydesdale boosters. And after that, I put down two more boosters on each of those. That gives me a total of six boosters. And to give me some more controllability, I also put down some reaction wheels on top of those boosters. And given this test here, for some reason it ended up launching me from the runway, but this still seemed to work out fine. And you can see here, I got up to nearly 20,000 meters before I dropped off my main boosters. This was very close to working right up until it ran into one of those other boosters here. So what it did next is add on some separatrons to push away those outside boosters. This was finally working, and you can see now I'm continuing to burn to build up some more speed. This is where things are going to get interesting, though, because I'm going to be gaining so much speed, it's going to be a problem. Checking the map view, my apoapsis was 65,000 meters, and I knew that if I continued burning on my trajectory, I was going to get out of the atmosphere. You'll see now that with the second to last stage, I'm burning nearly right into the ground. After shutting this off, I am trying to burn directly into the center of Kerbin. Now, the reason that I have to do this is because I'm currently moving at 4,000 meters per second, which is nearly double the speed that you can orbit at this altitude. So looking at my trajectory, I'm going to escape Kerbin unless I either slow down, which, you know, I don't really want to do, or burn into Kerbin like this in order to add an additional restoring force, effectively making it as if Kerbin has more gravity. Now, I went through into the math for this and found the exact amount of force that I'm going to need to push myself to stay in orbit. And one interesting thing is that the force needed to stay in orbit is proportional to the velocity squared. So doubling your speed means it takes four times the force to stay in orbit. Now, after that flight, I did need to make a few changes, and the first thing I wanted to do was add on a top stage that's basically just the crew capsule and some wheels. By doing this, it'll give me a super light lander, and will let me get back to the runway really easily. Now, you can also see I got rid of the main wings of the body, and by doing that, I create a lot less drag. I'm also trying to stay up way higher in the atmosphere to get rid of as much air resistance as possible. Now, I did kind of mess up this test, and you can see here, I'm actually 14,000 meters above the atmosphere, so I'm gonna need to fix that later. But unfortunately, once I got about of a sixth of the way around, I ended up running out of fuel. Now, to hopefully fix that, I had on a bigger fuel tank here, but in order to have this, I was also gonna need a bigger engine in order to be able to push myself down harder. Now, given this test of the launch pad here, my staging was slightly messed up at first, but giving this another try, I was able to get up pretty high, and you can see now, burning off the main ship, and once I point radial in, you can see now, I'm burning straight down to keep myself from flying out of the atmosphere. At the very least, though, I did make it over halfway around Kerbin until my fuel ran out. Now, at this point, it kind of just seemed like Methalox wasn't the way to go here, and instead, what I wanted to try doing was using hydrogen fuel. Now, the hydrogen fuel is a lot more efficient, so after I added this on here, I want to try giving it a test in the air now. Trying this out, though, there was one little thing I overlooked. The thing is, with Methalox, most of the weight is going to be in the fuel tanks and not with the engine. That's not true with hydrogen, though, and the engine alone weighs 10 tons. This means that even as I continue to burn, I'm going to be shedding a lower percentage of my weight, meaning that I'm still required to push with a lot more force near the end of my flight than I would be with Methalox. This meant that overall, I did about the same as before. Now, I was hoping to do a lot better than that, so you can see what I did here is I added on a much larger fuel tank, and after that, I also added on some parachutes. And with all this, I finally wanted to try going for a real attempt. Now, taking off the launch pad, I noticed it was quite a bit slower than before, and that extra extra large hydrogen tank was definitely loading this down a lot. Fortunately though, I was still going over 1,500 meters per second once I got up to 20,000 meters, and I got up to 4,200 meters per second when I deployed off the top stage. Now, I burned away from those bottom boosters there, and I tried to burn straight down, but I had a bit of stability problems, and you can see there I ended up flipping totally over. With a quick reload though, I pretty easily managed to stabilize myself, and now going 4,000 meters per second, I was burning straight down at 50,000 meters. Oddly though, I noticed that my engine was wasn't powerful enough, and I still seemed to exit the atmosphere. And I quickly realized that one of the assumptions I made in my math was that the fuel tank is going to be half empty. That, of course, is a good averaging, but for the early part of the flight, I am going to need to be able to move the entire mass of the fuel tank, so early on here, my engine actually isn't powerful enough to keep myself from going out of the atmosphere. Now, fortunately, though, I did manage to stabilize the 71,000 meters, so I figured that this would be a pretty good test run, since I'm going to be only a little above the atmosphere. Now, of course, I was 
was using all of the tricks I learned before were trying to burn down at the exact perfect rate to keep myself at the same height. This was working pretty well, but at some point I ended up getting down to about 2,000 meters per second, and once I saw this, I pretty much had no choice but to burn retrograde. Now, I was most of the way around the planet, so if I killed a bunch of my speed, I should be able to deorbit myself and get myself to get right back to the Kerbal Space Center. This lined up almost perfectly here. I did undershoot a little bit, but one thing I noticed that my apoapsis is going to be way above the atmosphere. That was definitely incorrect here, and I knew then that in the future, I was going to have to be a lot more careful when I do that final deorbiting burn to make sure that I wasn't going to go up too high. Now, trying to land on the ground here actually wasn't too bad at all, and you can see now, I managed to stabilize myself pretty easily. Unfortunately, though, none of these wheels seem to have any brakes, so I had to deploy my parachutes in order to slow down. I realized, though, that the parachutes probably weren't going to be that important otherwise, and I pretty much could just remove them. Now, one of the other changes I made here is I added on some decouplers and some solid rocket fuel boosters. These are meant to give myself a little bit more power to push myself down when the fuel tank is totally full. And after adding on some fixed landing gear that actually does have brakes, I wanted to try giving this another test here and seeing if I could set my first record. Now, taking off from the launch pad once again, it didn't feel too much heavier, which was good because I was worried those extra boosters were going to cause some problems, but you can see now, once again, around 30,000 meters, I had 1,600 meters per second, and I dropped off that bottom stage and continued to burn. Now, this time, about 50,000 meters, I was going about 4,300 meters per second, and once I saw that, I deployed off my long burn stage here, but I had some problems with stability that prevented me from burning down for quite a while. It wasn't until I was about 7,000 meters from the top of the atmosphere when I finally could start burning, and that was just too late, and I ended up exiting. Now, fortunately, with a quick reload here, I was going a bit slower, but I also was able to push myself down a lot sooner, and that was 16,000 meters, that was more than enough buffer, and dropping off these solid rocket fuel boosters, I got myself to stop increasing height and finally managed my speed. Now, this is a great sign, and fortunately, I also put down the exact perfect amount of boosters I was going to need, so I wasn't carrying any extra weight. But of course, after that, it was pretty much the same as before, Now I was just burning directly into Kerbin. After a little while, though, I checked out the map view, and I could see that I was about halfway around, but I only had around a quarter of my fuel left. That was actually okay, because again, once I get down to about 2,000 meters per second, I'll end up having to deorbit myself, but of course, by doing that, I slow down a lot, so ideally, I I won't have to do that until the last second. And continuing it on here, right about when I had 1600 meters per second of delta V left, I started to do that deorbiting burn, but I wanted to make sure I wasn't going to exit the atmosphere accidentally. To do that, I also burned slightly down into Kerbin, and this seemed to work, and my periops stayed in front of me. Now with this, it did say I was going to be overshooting the Kerbal Space Center by quite a bit, but I figured if I just nosedived into the ground, I should be able to intercept it. Now after quite a bit of flying here, I was trying to see the Kerbal Space Center in front of me, but I noticed that I was pretty low. Looking at the map view here, it said I was going to be undershooting it by quite a bit, and it seemed like I was bleeding off speed a lot quicker than I wanted. Now, I was trying to do my best to control this, but this glider was really not that controllable at all. After a little while, I had to end up landing on some grass a little bit short of the runway. This, though, was actually okay, and what I wanted to try doing was loading back before I launched off my plane and seeing if I could gain a bit more speed. To do this, you can see I spun up my rocket and I tried to fling away my plane. This actually seemed to work, and you can see here I launched myself up and quite a bit more out. Now also, some more careful piloting here, I ended up seeing the runway quite a bit below me, and with this, I knew I was going to have a pretty good approach. With the runway in sight though, it was also pretty obvious that I was coming at it at the wrong angle, and I considered landing on the taxiway, but I figured I should be able to stick the landing, assuming that I turned at the last second. I was also going pretty slow at this point, and if anything went wrong, the capsule was very unlikely to explode, so at the very least, everything should work out. And while the touchdown was a little suspicious, everything seemed to work out fine, and I ended up using my brakes that I added on and finally here, I ended up stopping. Now, this gave me a final time of just under 27 minutes for this run, but I thought that I could do a lot better if I made some simple changes. Now, part of those changes are going to be in the vehicle assembly building here, but part of them were just in piloting. To start out, though, I changed up some of the boosters I was using to make them burn for a lot longer with a little less thrust. Probably the biggest change I made, though, was actually the launch pad here, because instead of burning to the east, I'm now burning to the west. Ordinarily, you don't want to launch rockets towards the west, because you're going to 
ends up fighting Kerbin's rotational speed instead of getting a boost from it. In my case though, since I'm not trying to get to any other target, it actually benefits me here because while my speed relative to the surface does end up being the same, my speed relative to the atmosphere ends up being a lot lower. That means that I'm going to be fighting the atmosphere quite a bit less here and it also means that I need to push down with a lot less force since my orbital speed is quite a bit lower. Now this just meant that a lot sooner I ended up leveling off my altitude and I could burn a lot less with my main engine. That conserved quite a bit of fuel and instead of having to do that retrograde burn to slow myself down at the end, I could save it to the last possible second here in order to go as fast as possible for longer. In fact, at the end here, right before we got to the Kerbal Space Center, you can see I'm burning down a lot harder and my plan is basically to crash straight into the runway. Now, that seemed like it was going to be pretty fast if I could pull it off here and you can see now once I started crashing into the surface, I tried to get it right around the Kerbal Space Center. Now I dropped off my main fuel tank here, which I did realize might have been a small mistake because it probably would have done a good job of pulling me down faster, but overall this still wasn't too bad. And of course now my final approach to the runway, I kept slowing down more and more the further I got into the atmosphere, but this still felt like it was pretty fast. Now I'm sure you could do this faster if you just fell straight down the Kerbal Space Center and used parachutes in the last second, but trying to land on the runway also seemed like a pretty fun way to go about it, and overall I was actually pretty happy with just how fast I was doing it. Unfortunately though, I didn't have a mission time directly displayed since I ended up deploying off my top ship differently, but easily enough here, going back to when I deployed off that top stage, I ended up finding the mission time, and going back to the launch, I also find the mission time that I launched. Now subtracting these off each other and also adding on the time that I had that top stage deployed, you can see here I did that total circumnavigation in only 24 minutes. Now again, there are some ways I could have improved the speed on this, but overall I thought I did a pretty good job, and if anyone else wants to try to build on this, let me know what ideas you've got, and make sure to post your times in the comments below. Otherwise though, if you want to see more content like this, make sure to subscribe. If you have any other questions or comments, feel free to leave those down below, and otherwise, till next time.